mentorship and sponsorship, I would like to invite you all to be with me in the Philippines, empowering women and people in that country. And in behalf of the Ladies of All Nations International, our organizer and founder is Dr. Caroline Makaka. Hello, Dr. Caroline, how are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Anyway, Ladies of All Nations International is a nonprofit organization which brings together women and people in all backgrounds and cultures, emerging leaders who have a shared vision of driving better change in today's global communities. Loani operates worldwide chiefly to bring nations together under the umbrella of humanity with the ultimate goal being to support and uplift than their privilege. This passion for fashion event that we organize is for passionate people like you. And you are really chosen to be part of this event because we know that you are so passionate in your craft. You are well organized and well facilitated in your craft. So you are chosen to be one of our speakers. Without much ado, I would like to introduce to you our host, our beautiful host for tonight. Our beautiful host is from UK. She is a EU woman in finance shortlisted 2019, analyst, entrepreneur, and a law graduate specializing in compliance and risk, advocate of arts, culture, and well-being. She is also a uh, owner of a brand, fashion brand in UK right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Rebecca Lilly. Hey, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for a really nice warm welcome. Um, it's really amazing to be the host for this and to be amongst such a talented um, panel of people. It's, I'm really in awe of everybody here. And thank you so much um, to Charmaine as well and the Loney um, group because it's, it's really inspiring me to um, pursue my creative endeavors and to just be around like-minded, um, intelligent, creative and people who are passionate about what they do. So thank you so much for having me as the host. Um, Yes, I am a qualified stylist as well with the London School of Styling and from a young age have um, always had a passion for the arts and also costume design. So I actually really am in awe of everybody here who has a creative flair. And so, yeah, the passion for fashion is all about us, <laughs> all about fashion and whatever your trend is, whatever your vibe is. And I really hope that today's session um, with the conversations, we can help inspire the next generation of creatives who amongst this crisis might be feeling um, disheartened. They might not have a budget, their budgets might be cut. So I think it's really great to have open-ended questions where people of um, underprivileged backgrounds can be inspired and can take the onus off COVID just for a little bit because we know it's important and it's a global pandemic, but why don't we celebrate fashion and the arts and inspire the next generation of creatives in what we're about to talk about, guys? So, without further ado, um, I'm going to start the questions. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to each of the speakers and um, I'm going to start with Kimberly. And I'm just going to have a sort of... Um, an introductory couple of questions. So first of all, Kimberly, thank you for joining. And um, it's a pleasure to have you here. And could you please introduce yourself, your nationality, the country that you're from? It sounds like, it sounds like a CV right now, doesn't it? It sounds like an essay, but we promise it's just, <laughs> just an introduction. And, um, <laughs> and your company and also what kind of entrepreneur you are. So just a general feel about you and what you stand for in your company. Okay, so my <laughs> name is Kimberly Carey and I am um, living here in Abu Dhabi. I am American. I've been living in this country for nine years and I am the CEO and founder of Heavenly Reflection Makeup UAE LLE as well as by K. Nicole the brand Makeup Necessities line. 
um, that is the type of entrepreneur that I am. And um, that's my specialty. I specialize in makeup artistry as well as makeup products for beginners, for enthusiasts, as well as pros. Okay, that, that, that is an impressive um, summary and absolutely, you know, really impressive. And I think the fact that you, the Heavenly, I love the, the name as well, Heavenly uh, Makeup Brand, it's really cool. So thanks very much for that intro. Um, if we could go now to um, Charles, that would be great, thanks. Um, so you also, you have a fascinating background um, from physics and photography as well. Um, so could you um, do the same and tell us a bit about yourself, nationality, country, company, product line, and what kind of entrepreneur you describe yourself as? Sorry, um, could we just unmute Charles for a sec? That'd be great. Thanks, Charles. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. It's a nice start to this wonderful 2020, I guess, in this particular uh, <laughs> presentation. Okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, thank you very much for having me over. Really um, uh, humbled by the fact that you've asked me to come in and, and uh, be a panelist on this. My name is Charles Verghese. I'm an international photographer. I'm based in Dubai, grew up in Dubai, and, uh, and I'm originally from India. I uh, went to the U.S. Um, and since Kimberly was, is from the U.S., I studied in Arkansas for about eight years and did nuclear physics on there. Um, and I am basically an entrepreneur and a photographer, based, uh, and I am the founder of Charles Verge's Photography, obviously, but I've also started a thing called Freedom Tribe Photography, which is uh, something that I'm trying to empower people to, through photography, um, get to learn, um, you know, business skills and, and through different kinds of um, uh, online uh, sources and get themselves into financial freedom. Uh, like I said, my background is nuclear physics uh, in terms of education, but in, from, um, uh, in my corporate world, I was a, a network engineer and then I went, got into advertising and then I left all of that for, um, uh, to pursue my passion in photography. Um, yeah. Great, Go thank ahead. you. And I've just realized, um, so we're gonna come back to Kimberly after because I've got a couple more questions. So apologies, Kimberly, because I've just remembered I've got five more questions. So what I'm going to do is um, just ask you a few more questions, Charles. And um, mm -hmm. thank you for that introduction about yourself. Um, so it's interesting that you obviously come in, setting up on photography angle backstage. What would you describe as the most challenging part of your work, please? Um, in in this particular situation with, with uh, the COVID and the pandemic that's happening right now, the fact is that I am not able to pursue my passion, which is, you know, reaching out to people, be interacting with them and uh, taking photographs and, and, you know, covering events and stuff like that. Um, it has restricted my access to all of these clients and what I, what I love to do. But what I've done is I've turned it around and changed, changed, tried to make this into an opportunity where um, I thought the best way forward was to teach my skills, what I've learned, um, and help other people utilize this time when they're sitting at home uh, or, you know, uh, you know trying, twiddling their thumbs to learn photography, which, um, mm -hmm. which led me to create an online course uh, to start teaching people uh, about photography. Yeah, uh, that's really inspiring and a productive use of your time to, to, for you to stay inspired and for other people to stay inspired. How, so is that how you would current, you're currently surviving in this climate? Would you say uh, Yes, um, I, I basically just turned that thing around and, and trying to make sure that I'm empowering people. Um, I've, I was thinking to myself, you know, especially for women uh, mm -hmm. out there who have the potential to do so much, I noticed that, you know, they have a, a, a lot of limiting beliefs from whatever, you know, the, the society mm -hmm. and growing up in history. Um, my, one of my targets has been women because I want to try and empower them and, and you know, uh, give them the confidence, not only in learning photography, but also simultaneously um, nurturing a growth mindset and, uh, you know, encouraging business opportunities and financial freedom. Um, so, yeah, that, basically that, that is, is really a impressive. And as you know, as the women on this panel and the men, I'm sure will appreciate that, you know, every, everyone's journey is different. But as a woman, you can face significant obstacles in male dominated professions like photography. Could I ask um, who inspires your vision? Um, in terms of inspiration, first, I'd, I'd like to say I got inspired by my grandfather, who was a, who was a photographer. 
back in the day and I've got photographs of me lying around. I should have had it with me, I guess. Uh, but, you know, pictures of me as a, as a child bathing naked in a bathtub, which he had taken uh, of me as a kid. Now, he, why he is an inspiration is because he used to take photographs and not only take the photographs, he used to actually process the film and develop it and, and, and you know, yeah. make the photograph. But in terms of current times, um, I don't know if you, if you all have heard of Steve McCurry, and he's this big National Ge Geographic photographer who had done the photograph of the Afghan girl, which was on the cover of the National Geographic. These piercing eyes, you know, and it still sends a shiver down my spine when I think about it. And that basically was, you know, the start for this and it told me that, I, man, I need to become a photographer. I want to do wow. that and inspire people for, uh, to, to, to make photographs. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just, I've just, I can see in your face and how you talk about that. It's a real passion and you do it to inspire others, which, which it says a lot, you know, about you as a person. Could you just tell me your greatest achievement so far, please? Um, my greatest achievement, should I, I, I won't say that I failed in photography in, in college, <laughs> <laughs> which I did, but it was because I didn't turn in an assignment. No, um, um, like I said, my background has been, uh, you know, physics and, and uh, network engineering and all that sort of stuff. But even though I've done all of this, I've gotten into photography and I've done things like, you know, international um, car brands like BMW, Ferrari, Rolls Royce, and I do a lot of international events, uh, ten Dubai Tennis Championships, Rugby Sevens and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. My crowning achievement for me, or that makes me have fun uh, or, 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 you know, inspired uh, to, to inspire people is the fact that I was hired by EMAR, which is the, the developer for the world's tallest building as you probably know, in Dubai um, is the Burj Khalifa. So I was hired to to be one of the uh, to be the photographer for the launch of that particular uh, building. Back then, it was called wow. Burj Dubai. Yeah. Wow! What an impressive achievement, and all credit to you for that. And we won't tell anyone about your assignment. Okay. Um, yeah. you got that far. <laughs> so, <laughs> could you give us some advice about alleviating hardship in the, in these times, whether that's for struggling creatives or uh, a general comment? Um, basically, my message uh, to 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 all all people out there, and you know, especially women, because it's a a, a women's uh, predominant uh, platform, would be that no matter how challenging the times. Um, this is the best time to be creative because you have all this time to be by yourself. You can learn and be productive. And thanks to technology today, like how we're doing this with Zoom, uh, there's a large scope for achieving financial freedom uh, through creating your own businesses and, and, and venturing and trying out all these things now, uh, especially with online uh, affiliate marketing. Um, mm -hmm. These opportunities are all out there. And I just feel that because of this, I can. I want to target women, uh, myself, to to help them empower uh, with with you know to do the same things that that I'm trying to do. That yeah. Yeah, thank you, and that's a great piece of um, wisdom to leave your um, speech and intro on. So thank you so much, Charles. And um, so we're going to head back to Kimberly. My apologies, Kimberly. I was just starting, and I had a, quite a few more questions. So apologies for that. But I'm sure you'll make. <laughs> I'm sure you'll make up for it by inspiring lots of people as well in our chat. So, <laughs> so I can just you, be pretty, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, so could you tell us um, a bit about your most challenging part of your work in general terms? Please. The most challenging part of my work is trying to get another woman to understand how beautiful she really is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a challenging part. <laughs> um, and also understanding that we are all different and we're all made different and just because you don't look like that person that you see in the magazine or on Instagram so on and so forth does not mean that you are not worthy either you are just as worthy that's one and two that person doesn't look like that anyway <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so that is one of the most challenging things in in my business well, thank you. I mean, I am so with you on that. As a stylist, I, I see um, all sorts of shapes and sizes and I fully sympathize with your vision and see how that struggle is. How would, how would you say you're currently surviving because you don't have that maybe face-to-face -face contact with um, as many clients? So how, would, how are you adapting? How are you surviving 
Well, let's put it this way. Um, by profession, I'm an English teacher. So I am always on virtual lessons with children at all times. So <laughs> I teach um, social studies for a private school here. So that is one way that I'm surviving. But on the other side, that is my passion, which is the makeup artistry as well as the, um, the makeup necessities or products line. And with that, I have been able to survive it because it's not about money all the time. Hmm. It's about skill. And what have you done to enhance your skill set? And to go back to what Charles was saying, we have a lot of time on our hands, a lot of time to practice, a lot of time to get creative, a lot mm -hmm. of time to think and be different. And I think that with the things that I've come up with and um, the things that I see out there, I'm like, well, how can I up my game? So Heavenly Reflection was good before as far as artistry. This time has given me an opportunity to really focus on by K. Nicole, the brand with the makeup necessities. But that within itself, from me having a product has helped me to sustain uh, my artistry as well, because I have to promote both. And I, I think that is really powerful. And as I said, as a stylist, I really resonate with, with what, your, what your, your passion. So you have a day job and you have like what they call a side hustle and keeping those extra hours of the day, keeping motivated in this period is, is all credit to you. So, yeah. So I would just say, um, who or what inspires your vision for your brand? Okay, so I had a few things that, uh, as Charles was talking and as I was reading, and I was like, I don't know if anybody really, really inspires me except for the little girl who I once was back in the day, who never thought that she would be in this suit, who never thought that she would be um, an entrepreneur, who never thought that she would be a makeup artist, who never thought that she would be a model, who never thought that she would, would do anything that would be worthy of someone to see. So as far as who inspires me, it's that girl who I used to be. Wow. That is so uh, authentic, yeah. That's one, that's one, okay. The other, <laughs> the other who inspires me is my mother, of course. And one thing that I didn't realize is that my mother shared with me that your grandmother was a beautician. And I was like, I forgot all about that. Like my, my grandmother was the main hustler as far as uh, hairdressing was concerned in her time. She was the main deal. And she said it may have skipped a generation with me talking about my mom. Because <laughs> my mom is not the, the hair person nor the makeup person, but it moved over to me and it moved over to me later in life. I didn't start makeup until I was 32. You know, my grandmother was a little bit younger when she started with, uh, with hair and beauty, but at least she started. And that was, um, that's a m another inspiration for me, so. Wow. Do you know what? I, I think sometimes we can get so um, enthralled with, with celebrities and role models, which are great, but I think so, when something that's from home and a personal experience um, and you, you surpassed your own obstacles to inspire others, um, all credit to you for that. And um, I can see that you'll be a model, very striking and, and confident. So yeah, I can definitely see that as well with your creative eye as well. So um, could I just ask, uh, what has been your greatest achievement so far in your, um, with your, all your endeavors? <laughs> Multi-talented people here, there's loads of achievements. <laughs> well, where shall I begin? Number one, I moved. I am the only one of my family to actually move to a completely polar opposite country on the opposite side of the world, being American. Um, and in my family, it's very abnormal. Um, unless you join the military or do something like that. You know, um, my family, they don't do things like this. And I want to be an inspiration to, to those who are coming up after me. Um, wow, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just processing everything. So that was one. The other thing that um, has been my greatest achievement was when I was selected to be the first African-American alopecia um, model for Tips and Toes, which is one of the, um, well, they're pretty popular um, salon and spa here in the UAE. And I was the first to be showcased 
as well as one of the first African-American alopecia models to be showcased as well for Runway Dubai, as well as for uh, Prestige Style Fashion, which is an African fashion house here in Abu Dhabi. Wow, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so many achievements, but all of those are, you know, it's testament to your character and, and resilience in pursuing your passion um, in a way that is, is something that you've sort of set the mark now and it's, you know, it's almost what next for you because you just, you, you put, you set the bar pretty high now. So it's yeah. exciting. <laughs> um, it for, for, for others who would look at you and understandably so as, as an inspiration, as, as many people I'm sure are, um, what advice could you give, you know, for people to alleviate hardship at this time who might feel a bit demotivated? You're not alone. You're not alone. Um, not at all by a long shot. We all feel demotivated, but the question is, do you stay there? And how long do you stay there? How long do you plan to stay there? And when do you plan to actually get up and start doing something, doing something that makes you happy, doing something that motivates you, doing something that might actually motivate other people? Yeah. That was one reason why I came up with Heavenly Reflection was because I wanted other people who were like me to see someone like me. <laughs> wow. So you see a need, you fill a need. So your demotivation needs to become your motivation so that way you can motivate other people. Wow, and, and that is, yeah, I mean, it's something that is just, whether it's a makeup line, anybody can relate to that as well, as you say, you know, when are you going to get up and get motivated? The time is now. Um, could you leave us with um, a brief uh, a of wisdom, like a life realization or a piece of wisdom for everyone, just to summarize? You will be demotivated, but the point is you have to start. You have to start. You have to take that one step at a time. That one step can lead to the biggest change in your life. For me, um, for a lot of people, like I was saying, as alopecia. Alopecia is a condition where your hair falls out for absolutely no reason. I've had alopecia for 21 years. I've had it to where um, I've had spots in the middle of my head. I've had it to where all of my hair came out, like my whole body. Like you don't even see this, this is gone. Mm. That was for the first, ooh, gosh. That was about three, three and a half years ago. And within the last year and a half, it's reversed itself. So my hair is growing back. But the point is that you just never know who's watching you, who's waiting for you. You never know that you're that person's inspiration. And from you doing nothing, which is not exactly a positive, you need to be careful of that. So that motivation could motivate you as well. So that's wow. my suggestion, start. Yeah do something start thank you thank you very much kimberly that's really heartfelt and even i'm inspired i think what am i going to do next <laughs> i think i've got to i've got to post this <laughs> okay so um thanks for that kimberly um now we're going to go to um patricia um and um hello patricia could we just unmute um that would be great please sorry can can you unmute um patricia that would be great thank you we um can 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 you hear me okay <laughs> oh there she is hello hello thanks for hello joining. yeah so um so you're a you're a globe trotter amongst many things so what i would like to um talk to you about is uh, could you give a brief introduction about yourself um first your nationality and the country you're currently based in and your product line to start, please. Good. So, um, uh, thank you, first of all, for uh, this uh, important chat tonight. It's very interesting and the people that spoke uh, before me is very, very interesting um, inspiration. I'm uh, Patrizia Marin. I'm uh, Italian, but actually I'm living in Dubai. And um, my passion for fashion comes um, so far, probably from my root, probably from my country. We, everybody grows up uh, in our country with a uh, special taste for beauty, for uh, fashion, for design, 
also for a kind of a uh, happy lifestyle. So I think it's something that uh, we bring with us. And for me, it's also uh, a, a way to express ourselves. It's very, very important that everybody choose, uh, you know, to fashion somehow to represent himself. It's not just a dress. It's not just, uh, you know, to choose a proper designer. It's like uh, something that you become somehow. So you, my, yeah, so that, that's, that's really inspiring already. And could you tell me, because I know you're the founder of Marco Polo Group, um, could you tell us a bit more about what you found um, has inspired your vision for that, founding that company? Okay, um, I'm a, a, you know, it was exactly Marco Polo that inspired me. I'm a, from Venice, like he, he was from Venice, and he, he left uh, his region and started to travel the world and discover a new world, actually. He traveled to Middle East, he traveled and discovered China, and then uh, other country in Asia, and then he comes back 25 years later. And in the meanwhile, he did the uh, business, he shared experience, you know, other languages. He was ambassador of Venice around these uh, countries. And at the end, he was a writer, because now we know all his adventure because he's a writer. Uh, he wrote them. So Thank now, you. sorry. Now, I was going to say, that's, that's really a good background, so thank you. Um, could you tell us um, um, your greatest achievement to date with your, with your company? So, uh, I was really inspired from this guy or his life that I want to be him somehow in a lady version, in a 2.0 version, in a sometimes coronavirus version. <laughs> and what I could achieve is to create a Marco Polo experience later on. And I'm doing uh, probably exactly what he did in the past. So I'm helping and representing my country all over the world. So what is my best achievement? Is like living Marco Polo experience, experiment every day the beauty of fashion, the beauty of life, the beauty of a country, or what you, you, you grow and dream with, you know. So that is my, for me, my best achievement, is really to be able to recreate somehow the magic of his adventure. And doing it in my way, in my contemporary time. And also now, I got a very huge lesson for this corona season, because, you know, mainly my work is traveling the world, I share my experience with my clients, with the people, or inspiring people too. And then we learn in this season that uh, what changes are just the tools. Because okay. You can, you can just uh, travel with your mind, you can just surf on the internet, you can just have a meeting like now, you can have a different network. And what you have to have with you is always your passion. That is enough. Yeah, that is a really beautiful philosophy because although we can't travel as much at the moment, as you say, you can travel with your mind, you can explore different avenues, um, whether that's through creative um, endeavours or reading or whatever the case may be, um, we really can travel with our mind and I love that quote that you've just said. So please could you um, give a bit of advice about how to alleviate hardship in the COVID season um, for struggling brands or fashion designers out there? I think uh, for me, and I think not only for me, the best of this season, if we have to find some good in this um, strange mm -hmm. season, is that everybody has more time. Because mm -hmm. we were obliged to not be on the street, do not be all over, do not pack, do not be in the airport. So we were somehow home or in the office and we are really time and we have time to explore projects that you usually don't explore. And also we were used and obliged to change our attitude. I, I show you, I tell you something, for example, me, like I think every woman in the world, mainly Italian ladies, I'm, uh, I die for shoes. Now I don't need, I have like something totally different wearing now. And it's so funny for me that you can be fashion anyway. So fashion oh, is something yeah. that you have deep on it. So the good of this season is that finally we had time, finally the rules changed 
And if you are able to change with uh, the season, you can achieve even more. Also because that's you become exactly. very selective the moment, you know. Uh, if you are not ready for change, if you are not ready for enjoy, also the moment that is not the best, it's not the easiest one. But if you are this, with this mindset, really is there a good time to achieve the more and also probably to be creative. So yes. to go in another direction. So uh, if you ask me if I would travel, of course, if I want to meet my family in Italy, yes. But if I enjoy this season, at the end, yes. As I think it's the first time in more, my whole entire life that I'm not traveling. In something uh -huh. to, totally new and somehow excited me. That's, that's really inspiring. And also I was going to say that, although some people would say a woman can never have enough shoes, and you could be like me and just wear them around the different rooms in your house for absolutely no reason at all in the lockdown. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's really great that, as I said, as a designer, you're inspiring people to be creative and in more ways than one and travel and books and museum sites are great for that as well. And it's your brain that has to work more because you have to find a solution. What was working uh, two weeks ago, one month ago doesn't work anymore. And what yeah. is, uh, you know, our way to deal or to create change completely. And the way we exchange idea, opinion, feelings too, is different. So I yeah, think that's uh, a if you have uh, this attitude, you can uh, take a huge lesson from this season. That's a great piece of wisdom. Um, and we'll go look forward to coming back to you for the panel discussion. So thanks very much, Patricia, for that. Um, I've learned something new as well there. So thank you. Um, if we can go to um, Simran um, Ahusa, is that, is that, is she, is she there? Um, just double check Thank you that. so much, I'm here. Yes, we okay. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, if you could please introduce yourself, um, give um, a bit of background about your nationality, the country that you're doing the Zoom call from, and a bit about um, yourself and your product line, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you so much for being kind of A very, very global namaste and a warm hello to all of you, Charmi. I sincerely apologize for the delay uh, since my awards got slightly delayed, I was hosting the virtual awards. My name is Simran Ahuja, and I'm from India, and um, I stay in the city of Mumbai, that is a city of fashion, teams, as well as finance. And uh, I love the world of fashion, and I believe if fashion is your passion, then definitely everything that it takes to really be successful in it. Uh, I'm truly honored to be the brand ambassador for 3i, which is an organization from USA and I'm the brand ambassador for the fashion fraternity. We also do a lot of beauty pageants and of course we do everything related to fashion and really bring forward these designers who really want to pursue their career as a designer as well. Uh, I've been uh, crowned in India 2013 and uh, thereafter, yeah, I've traveled the world as an anchor, known as an international celebrity anchor since I worked in Hollywood as well as Bollywood, right from Michael Douglas to the Cannes of Bollywood. Um, I've run the prestigious awards and worked with the Oscars Academy as well as the Film Fair and the IFA Awards. So thank you. That was a very brief introduction. So at first, I truly thank Charmi and all the magnificent people from across the world who are in the world of fashion. And I think major of us, maximum of us are ladies. So to all the lovely lady and girl entrepreneurs, hats off to you. I truly, truly uh, am thankful for this wondrous opportunity of being here on this platform. Thank you, Sweden. Thank you so much. And thank you, yeah, Simran. I really recognize you as well from when we did the, um, we've done a talk before. So it's a pleasure to, to be with you again when you were hosting as well. So thank you so much. Um, well, I, I know that you are an international celebrity anchor and you do so much and you wear many hats and all of them stylish and um, confidently, as they say. Um, so could you tell us a little bit, because you do so many things and you're an ambassador and um, a cultural ambassador as well, um, could you tell us, you know, what is the most challenging part of your work? Is it um, combining all the things you do or what, just in general, what's the most challenging things? Uh, definitely, uh, when we think of what is the most challenging thing, we have to really keep up to the trend on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes, being very trendy, 
really having knowledge from across the world, from all the arenas is very, very important for all of us. You have to be constantly accustomed to everything that is going on. It be runway or be it from the personal front because a lot of designers here in India, we do a lot of stuff related to the community we like to serve. So we are a lot into Indian outfits. If it's got to do with selling, as in selling products to the final consumer. But if it's got to do with uh, runway shows, then of course we do have the international trend. You have to really, really uh, keep abreast of the international trends which are going on. So that is the challenge. But right now, sweetheart, the major challenge we all are facing is, uh, you know, that yes, what will really happen, especially at this point of time of COVID-19, when we really don't expect people to have a lot of money or to spend a lot of money. So all we need to get is into a lot of creativity, a lot of innovation to really make sure that we cater to people's, uh, uh, you know, ex probably, you know, really bringing down the prices and really cater to them so that they could have and afford, you know, the designer collection which one has. At the same time, uh, all the designing collections are very, very unique. So we're having, uh, you know, everything matching. So I'm, if I'm wearing a formal suit today, I'm going to have something really matching to the top. And I'm going to have my mask accordingly, have my gloves, and really try and create that look, make it look very, very trendy. Because sales is a major aspect right now, but otherwise, keeping abreast of really what's going on across the world and to cater to everyone and to really fulfill everyone's dreams is a challenge otherwise. So there is a difference between the challenge otherwise and the challenge now. I think that is, that is an amazing um, inspiration as well in itself of how to survive in this climate to, yeah, get up, get dressed and um, feel glamorous, have that passion for fashion um, with your mask. And there's no reason to stop being who you are or express yourself like that. So thank you so much for that. And can I just ask who inspires your vision um, for all that you do? Sorry, sorry, I didn't get you. Who or what inspires your vision? And in what you do? I'm extremely inspired by definitely big brands as well. But right now, I only look forward uh, to my Indian designers. And I always try and wear their collection, especially when I walk the red carpet and the green carpet. Uh, as I represent the country on an international arena, I'm extremely, extremely fond of Shane and Peacock, one of the top designers of the country. So on an international arena, when you're really wearing their gear, it really makes you feel like a goddess. So I completely love them and I'm in awe of the collection. And my second option is Arjuna Coach. When I'm doing and walking and working at the red carpet and the green carpet here in India, when I wear her collection. Wow, and, and I'm sure you look fabulous as ever, whichever carpet that you're on, you grace your presence. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about how any advice to um, struggling creatives um, to alleviate hardship? Um, for their brand, whether that's via motivation. So how would you describe how to alleviate hardship for creatives at this time? You have to really have a lot of patience, perseverance, and wait for that right moment to click. As we always say, that you have to be there at the right time and the right moment. Even to be the recipient of the compliment from Hollywood actors or Bollywood actors or from celebrities across the world, we always say you have to be at the right time and at the right moment. A very small example, a very small example. Um, you know, I just came back from one of my shows in the morning and my designer outfit didn't fit me well. So I was looking forward to calling other designers if they could give me something in a span of one hour and probably have something for my fit. So this is truly the need of the art. If you be on your toes and if your mind is completely calm and relaxed and you can cater to people at the spur of the moment and be unique than others, you know, rather than just uh, believing in procrastinating and at the same time, not thinking about, uh, you know, getting and catching up on your sleep, but being on your toes all the time, which is truly the need of the art for the fashion industry. So if you can really be really prompt and at the same time cater to your clients, to your lovely customers, and of course, if it's celebrities, then 24 by 7, just make them happy, which will really make them bloom in that particular outfit. But trust me, you need lots of patience. And definitely, we don't have to always think about the monetary gains. You also have to think about the satisfaction you get with your creativity, because that will, towards the end, 
you know, fetch us everything. So I believe you can always work in two aspects. One would be where you sell your designing collection to the masses. That could be, uh, you know, uh, where you really try and give it to maximum people, masters in quantity. But as far as the quality is concerned, where your design will speak, where the magazines, where the television channels will speak of your designs, be very liberal on not really thinking on the price there and simply thinking about your creativity being the topmost important. And here, it would be your pricing being the topmost importance because you will really earn from the quantity sold, but here it will be exclusive quality, which will take you up the ladder. A balance between the two will just be perfect for you to excel and to take your brand ahead. And patience is all we need. So I'm gonna request you all, be there, be there at every time with your smile, with your that opportunity to always serve that you are here to help your celebrity look like a goddess and be the best. So this is what two aspects coming together, you know, in a very well-mannered way will help you survive and will help you excel at the right time, will help you fetch the topmost awards in the world. Thank you so much, Simran. As always, you know, you're always, it must be your yoga as well that you do. I know you do a lot of fitness and yoga, but you have such a patience demeanor, which is um, also, it, it's inspiring as well, how, how creative you are and how much you can express that. So I look forward to chatting with you later. Thanks very much for that. Thank, thank you, you Sweeta, thank you so much. Thank you, Charmin, and thank you, Sweeta. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So um, could we go to uh, Mauricio, please? Um, just if we could go to Mauricio, that would be great. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, how are you doing? It's, it's going well so far, so good. I'm sure you're inspired as well at the moment. Yes, yes. Actually, I, I am right now in an island in Costa Rica because we have a children's foundation and we help into the COVID-19 situation. So we're giving around 13 uh, food packages to 13, 13, well, actually it's 100,000. 300 families we are benefit today. So um, besides yeah. being an actor and a model, so I work as a producer as well. I have my foundation for 14 years in Latin America and we reach already 30,000 kids and we save 930 kids for commit suicide because I passed through a child abuse when I was eight years old. And I decided to transform the, the pain to successfully. So that's what my, my testimony is about. And, and most of the people in Latin America know about it. Oh, great. So um, could you tell us a bit, all credit to you doing so much work for the COVID-19 um, efforts as well. That's really impressive, you know, and going above and beyond what, what you have to do. So um, could you also tell us um, a bit about what kind of entrepreneur you are as well? Thanks. Uh, yes, well, uh, I came from Costa Rica, you know, I'm, I'm from Costa Rica and when I was a child uh, from my, uh, my parents are very poor people, you know, and, and I grew up in a poor family. Yeah. I had my first pair of shoes when I was th three years old. So, and I passed through a child abuse since many, many children in Latin America suffered that, but mm -hmm. uh, because I not decided to be in the dark world, you know, dark world, and, and I decided to be a successful actor and model. And I, I went to New York and I got signed up with Wilhelmina New York. And in 2001, I became the first Latin um, model to be in campaigns like Gucci, Prada, Tommy Hilfiger. And uh, just to know me as the exotic model, you know, because my my father are from China and my mother are from Costa Rica, so I got like a mix. Then I decided to study acting in, in Broadway, and I got a few roles, you know, in Spider-Man One, Spider-Man Two. Uh, actually, in Spider-Man Two, I got the, to be put, the, you know, the double. And then I work in a series called Sex in the City as the uh, Mark Jacobs model, you know. And after that, I went to a soap opera and the, the movie that I got really famous, it was for Apocalypto from Mel Gibson. So 
he got me as the lead role in the teaser trailer worldwide. And it's for that reason I love the, the rainforest because I have to run many, uh, many times in the rainforest in Mexico for that movie. And I got the passion to, to do every, um, every work that I do uh, helping children because I pass through the child abuse. And what I do with my children's foundation is to give knowledge of, uh, and of people got really pain about that, you know, about child abuse or psychologist abuse. So I believe we can use our talent to, to be uh, a voice uh, anywhere in the world. So I signed up uh, as well with a few uh, contracts, um, branch contracts, where actually I go and, and do like uh, uh, speechments or about to fight about the children's being abused in Latin America. So I kind of like say, stop it, you know, and stop that and, and, and to do that bad things to the women as well, because that is horrible. So right now I, I am part of the UN platform, you know, the ODS committed, and I work uh, very close to the UN and still working in movies. Um, right now I'm going to be released a drug at the movie. It's a movie prevention. I am the producer as well in this movie and an actor. And I think so, uh, all the work what I do is to be a voice to, to you know, to the people have pain and to knowing um, the world that these people have many things to do in this life and, and they can keep going and grow up, you know, and not be in the darkness. I think that that is really powerful to anybody who watches this or who hears this, who has life experience, whether that's in acting or in fashion, because some of the greatest actors and creatives I've met have um, come through adversity and they have um, everything that they've worked for is heartfelt and they work as if it's going to be taken away from them and they don't take anything for granted. And, and I think it's inspiring the work that you're doing and um, that sort of act that is, you know, not acceptable to children or women. And it's great that there's people like you actually out there advocating your cause and putting your talents um, so, so across like that. So, but what I would say is that must be quite challenging um, at times. So what is the most challenging part of your work? Well, I think so. The most challenging that I have is to become a, a famous celebrity in the United States because as a Latin person, it is very hard to do it. It's like always to do casting, always to go to a fashion casting as well. Because you are a Latin, everybody thinks you are no um not the right person to do it because you are not an american you are not a qualified because you look but i think so when i got in 2001 to be a, uh, one of the most famous model with wilhelmina which actually is the most amazing um, agency in the world the model modeling agency that breaks that you know and that that was a big challenge because I have to be in New York, I have to compete it. I have to be um, in the right moment and the right time as well, but I have to be strong and I have to be, uh, uh, to know that I can do it. So I think so that is the message, what I give to people, you can do it, everything you can do it, no matter what it is, how hard it is, you're gonna do it. If you think you're gonna do it, you can do it. Thank you. That, that is a great message for people um, of all nationalities who want to achieve their dreams, uh, whether that's in acting or on anything else. So um, can I ask you, um, who inspires your specific vision? Every woman, <laughs> because I, my mother passed away uh, with 54 years old, very young. She was a very, um, in a very um, poor family. Always, she thinks the, the poverty is not an excuse to be someone. And that is what she teach me about because she never went to college. She never got the opportunity to, to, to go to education, but she did it. I mean, she, she becomes a, 
a, a, um, well, actually, a, a very um, well-known woman in Costa Rica because she uh, did a, a factory bread and she bring work to 50 women in, in the city. So I think so, that is my, my inspiration, the women's, because I think so many women have things to join to the, to the world and we have to give them the opportunity to, to speak, to tell everyone uh, you are a powerful person in this world. And, and I think so, that's, that's my yeah. inspiration. And I think that um, for, to hear a man speak about um, women like that and as a, such a strong um, close to home connection that has truly inspired work that has then gone on to help people in Costa Rica and beyond, um, I would just say that thank you for that. And it's really refreshing to hear a male's perspective um, and, and that, uh, that their mother inspired them to such a degree that their livelihood and passion would be influenced like that. So thank you very much for that, Mauricio. Could you um, um, just leave us with um, a, a two sentences about wisdom for this pandemic, please? Give love and be in peace. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> if you give love to everyone, everyone, so you're going to receive love. And, and if you be in peace, it means that you are okay. You are okay, and you're gonna be okay. And I, I tell everyone, please um, help everyone. Whatever you can do in the city, uh, and you work, even in, around your house, everyone needs at least a hope, you know, and, 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 and to give a word of, of hope and, and, and Tell them uh, everything is going to be okay. You know, everything is going to be okay. Thank you so much, Mauricio, um, for that. And really heartfelt and, and um, really inspiring for many, many reasons, whether it's close to home helping people or on a larger scale. So thank you very much for that. Um, if we could go to um, um, Priya, that would be great. Thank you. Is Priya, can we unmute Priya, please? Hello, everyone. Hi, Priya. Thank you for joining us. Um, could you give a brief introduction about yourself, um, where you're from, where you're calling us from, and a bit about what kind of entrepreneur you are, please? So my name is Priya Telavne. Originally, I'm from India. Based in Dubai, entrepreneur, architect, interior designer. And I founded 361 Degrees Design Solution, which is an interior design studio. Having said that, personally, I'm a dancer and actor, and I have been doing theater and dance shows uh, since I was three years old. I love camera, and I'm an international speaker as well. That's my uh, little brief. Uh, what I love uh, is I love fashion. See me, I have my unique style and I always like to carry that because people uh, relate to me with that style, with that particular color. And this is what I love about fashion. So I go with the current trends, but I try to uh, do it what suits me and what looks comfortable on me, which boosts my confidence. Actually, everybody should try and do that. Don't go to the uh, design trends or fashion, but try to make it yourself, like the personality. Thank you. That's a great philosophy about passion, dressing for yourself and your own confidence and having your own sense of style. Um, yeah, thank you. So could you tell us a little bit, because you're obviously, all of you are multi-talented, so it, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a struggle with the questions because it's like, oh, there's so many talents in, in the um, panel here. Um, but could you give us the, um, tell us the most challenging part of your work so far that you've found? So if you see that, uh, I'm a very creative person, and uh, but I do India design and fit out, and fit out is a really male-dominated uh, work. So I go on the project sites, and a lot of people keep on asking me, do you do that glamorous when you go on the project sites? And 
something good for uh, ladies. So I tell them that, uh, see, there is uh, nothing, there is no do's and don'ts when you go on the site. It's just to adhere with the regulations. But that doesn't mean that I cannot look good, I cannot be presentable, uh, I cannot wear heels. So I do that uh, very often. Uh, this is always, you know, your mindset, how you look at the challenge and how well you try and overcome that. Because people take inspiration from you and I feel that there are so many ladies who are always thinking that this might be right, or it might be not good, or what society will think, or what my friends will think, how are people are going to treat me. So, you know, I don't think about all this. My focus is very clear. So I try and see every day what is my priority, how I should do well, and I just focus on and I go for it. Good for you um, in that sort of mindset thinking, oh, I'm going to stay focused and take inspiration from there. So in this current climate, of we've all been affected by um, the COVID-19. How do you currently survive as a creative person? So when uh, um, you talk about creativity, creative, for, to get creative, you, know, you need to be relaxed. You need to have that happy feeling from inside and then more creative. People talk about, yeah, you have to be creative. But how do you will be creative? So I have realized uh, during this pandemic and the lockdown that what makes me happy, so my passion is dancing. When I dance, my happy mood just come, you know, come out and I become like, I get that energy which I have never thought about. So what I do is I utilize my dancing skills to practice, to be perfect, and try to do my work. What happens is all around me is happy and good feeling, peaceful, and that me more innovation and digitalization is that I have realized it, and I have molded uh, the things do uh, online so we do virtual tour for the sites so we consultation on the uh, online face-to-face -face clients and how you know, the is working so what i would like to see it as you know challenge and when there is a challenge uh, there are multiple solutions you just have to eat in an open-minded way and then go for it Thank you. And obviously with dance, um, you have to look eloquent and, uh, sorry, um, you know, elegant and also um, different types of trends and fashion is really incorporated in dance as a platform. So I can see the link there. Um, and who inspires your creative vision? So what inspires me more is the ladies. The ladies who are achieving, you know, their goal. They are doing super work. They are commendable. They are doing something out of this world. You know, we call it as, oh my God, how she did that? And that makes me really inspired. Um, I try to see, to learn from each and every individual and see how I can mold all this learning uh, to develop myself, to be better version of mine and have that more confidence, uh, enthusiasm, which I can circulate through a positive energy to people who are around me. And this is, I think, a, a, a very uh, good thing. And one thing which I always follow is I jot down all my dreams. I feel that you dream big and work towards it to make them reality. And this is not a dialogue. This is something which I have been following and I have been super successful in that. So I feel that it's really, it will work if you do it. You have yes. And just, yes, thank you, Priya. And, and obviously, you're, you've had lots of achievements. Um, so what would you say is your greatest achievement um, personable to you? So the greatest achievement in your eyes? So I, I am already, you know, I'm hungry for a <laughs> My parents used to say that when I was a kid. And they always used to see me, you know, to be a perfectionist. So whatever I do, whatever I put my mind and soul to, uh, I try and think that I'm excelling. A few of my achievements that I have won, Asia um, won MENA Region Award for Business, and I was one of the Emirates Women Award in Dubai. Uh, and having said that, after the Emirates dance, acting, all these awards, one day I thought I would uh, uh, participate in the 
and I want to win that. And I have done it uh, last year. I won the uh, India Globe which happened in Dubai. So I won the beauty pageant. So wow, yeah, it's dear to me because I was I'm a mother, and uh, in my late thirties, uh, a lot of people you know thought, oh my God, this is uh, some something you know weird. Why she's doing it? Uh, but I just thought, no, I want to do that, and I want to give a chance to myself that okay, I can do much more than what I can think. So that's that's my achievement. That's, that's impressive and, and obviously with so many achievements that one obviously meant significantly something to you, definitely. So um, could I just, you leave us with um, a bit of wisdom or a life realization in this pandemic um, that could inspire others? Um, I would say the first thing is the knowledge. The more you are knowledgeable, the more confident you are and it will help you to the long run. Um, you keep learning Try and excel in your field. Try and excel personally in things which you like to do. That will really help you and people will look up to you for inspiration. The second thing is don't expect too much. You cannot expect the world will be the same and everything falls back in your lap and everything is going to be fine. No, you will have to work so hard to make that thing happen. You will give up. Try to say yourself that, okay, if this is a situation, I'm ready for work. If you're ready for worse, you will definitely, definitely come across whatever your situation come in front of you. So I would really say that be unique, uh, be authentic. Authentic is very important because people know that whether you're fake or whether you're authentic. Mm. Try and develop your personal as well as professional. Dan. That's how people can connect with you. People will remember you. So you uh, try um, more time to develop your personal life. Thanks very much, Priya. That's really good advice for designers, creatives, and brands alike there. So really useful advice. Thanks very much. Um, and now we have uh, Nihoka. Is, is, uh, are you there? Hello. Nice big wave there. <laughs> Could we unmute Nahoka, please? That would be great. Thanks. Um, so, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, so, if we just unmute, that would be great. Thank you. Thank Hi. you so much. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. Hi. Um, so um, we're just, we're, it's going really well and everyone is expressing their passion for fashion, but also their creativity and how that is fueled in other areas. So we've had obviously Priya through dance and different things as well. Could you just introduce yourself and which country you're from, nationality, and um, just a general intro about yourself, please. Okay, so my name is Nayoka. I was born in Jamaica, but I came to London when I was nine years old. So England, London is now my home. Um, I'm a fashion designer, a celebrity stylist, and I also work with children's services. So I work with kids who are um, basically on the child protection list. And I also um, work in events, on events as well. Wow, another multi-talented person we have here. I was saying, when I give, when people are doing their intros, the list is so long and it shows that, you know, they're just multi-talented, everyone on the panel. So thank you for that. Um, so I'm a stylist as well, so I, I, I see um, the creative vision there. But what I was going to say is, could you tell us a bit more about um, your, pro your product line or, you know, your sort of unique selling point? Um, so what I do, what I create, I create things. Um, for red carpet gowns and stuff and when I like envision my designs is to make ladies look their best in whatever it is if they're asking for somewhere like a specific occasion so my things I'm inspired by the 70s 60s 70s like the Diana Ross era do you see what I mean? Yeah, so it's like, whatever it is that I like to dress my clients in I want them to know that their queens once they put on one of my pieces yeah I can see the passion there and I love it and you yeah. even though you're you've got so much passion for others you're very yeah. specific about the, your vision and that's so key yeah. for a creative 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but what would you say, because obviously dealing with lots of personalities in style as well, obviously as a celebrity mm -hmm. stylist, um, what yeah. would you say is the most challenging part of the work that you do? It's always going to be a challenge because obviously everybody's got their different flavours, different um, style and stuff that they like. So it's always about, obviously, whatever your customer clients want, you will always need to achieve that. So I try to listen definitely to what they're asking for. And if I find that there's a challenge along the way, it's about um, communication, how you communicate with that individual. Like, yeah, if it's a bit difficult in what they're asking for, you can always go around it. You see what that's, I mean? That's really good advice for creatives at the moment who might yeah. feel a bit struggling in this climate. Um, exactly. Communication is key and the, and, yeah. the, and the client is key and go and adapt. Um, so mm -hmm. how are you, yeah, how are you surviving at the moment in this climate in your creative work? Well, it is difficult because I did have a show organised for September, London Fashion Week, which obviously has to be cancelled to next year. So within that, um, I'm working a lot at home and it's... Oh, could we just unmute uh, Nahoko? So, so I've kind of planned now for next year, so that's helped me in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's really good that you had it all planned, but then you're all thinking ahead. So the key thing exactly. I took from you there is adapting, thinking yeah. ahead. Um, and yeah, so who inspires your creative vision? Or who or what? <laughs> yeah, with inspiration, I get inspired by everything around me. <laughs> yeah, like it can be from the kids that I work with, as I said. I can be walking and like someone, like it could be a man or woman with a certain style. I'm inspired by basically everything, everything around me. Wow, yeah, that is a really good philosophy. Um, we had earlier, you know, Patricia saying you can travel with your mind, you know, yeah. when we can't travel. So that's a great philosophy as well, um, to be inspired by multiple things. Yeah. Um, so could you, because obviously you're already a celebrity stylist, which is a massive, mm -hmm. you know, a massive achievement, but could you summarize your greatest achievement, please? My greatest achievement? Um, I've won a few awards um, and obviously by winning the awards it shows that your hard work is being noticed so again I was happy happy within myself happy with everything that I've kind of put forward like I've worked hard to get where I am um, and again when I first started out I, I styled my ambassador who's an international supermodel so I styled her for the Royal Ascot in 2014 and she was listed as one of the best dressed. And she came on like the front cover of the newspapers and stuff. So to be fair, that would be my most achieve, achievable um, moments. Wow, yeah, and to get that recognition so early on as well, it sets, exactly. you, sets the tone for future success. Um, so wow, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's really, I'm learning as well myself as a creative yeah. person here. So um, for people um, in this climate, stylists or creatives otherwise, what advice would you give to alleviate hardship? Um, with well, that, with about... that passion, sorry, yeah. Sorry, I missed that I was going to say, um, but whilst maintaining that passion for fashion. <laughs> well, I guess if you've got the passion within you, then it's about carrying it forth and not letting that passion like burn, like just die down. If you've got a passion for something, that's, it's a drive. There's a force that wants, like, you have to go and get it. So that's what you believe in. Do you see what I mean? So, again, it's all, always about keeping that within you. Go and get it, no matter, no matter how hard it is to get there. There's hurdles. There's always going to be hurdles. It's about going around, going over it, and above and beyond. That's really inspiring. I'm sure some creatives in this who who have a love of fashion but might feel demotivated would yeah. really really um, listen to that and see, see all your achievements as well. Could you give us um, any, any more summary of, of what you do and also um, a bit of wisdom um, to inspire others? Um, I'm, all, I'm all about empowerment. Um, I love helping people. And again, it's all about asking for help. So even myself in the industry, there's always like there's always people that's out there that can help you so it's about how you communicate art for it 
Do you see what I mean? Um, there's times where I kind of message Caroline, she'll help me out and stuff. But it's about asking your neighbours and checking in and seeing if they need anything that you can help with. Yeah, that's really, uh, although it seems like a basic thing, it's actually something a lot of people find hard to do, isn't it? Actually just say, exactly. can I have a bit of help? So I think that's a great um, piece of advice there, definitely. Um, well, thank you to all of the speakers. Um, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm inspired more than ever, actually, by, by all that you've achieved um, and will go on to achieve, I'm sure, even, even with the COVID-19. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, go back um, and do a few, two questions each um, that I've drawn up and then we're going to open it up to um, the Zoom participants for a QA. and a um, so yes, oh, thank you very much. If, if you could mute, if you're not um, sort of having the Q&A, that would really help. So um, first, thank you very much. I'm going back to Kimberly. Hello again, Kimberly. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> so I'm sure, you, I'm sure you're inspired as well by the talent around um, in this. Definitely. It's a yeah. great network of people to have. Um, it is. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I've got some questions I've drawn up. So the first one is, um, what is your number one product from Heavenly Reflection and why? Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. So be it that Heavenly Reflection is the artistry side. The number one product of Heavenly Reflection is me. Period. So if you do not have me, you do not have Heavenly Reflection. That does not exist. So the next thing that I, <laughs> thank you. Um, the next thing that I would say out of the artistry, I'm sorry, out of the product line side or the makeup necessity side, my hero product, in the words of Sarah Blakely of Spanx, she always says, make sure you have your hero product. Don't work, work on anything else. Too bad I didn't listen to her until maybe about a year later. <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> my point is uh, my hero product is called Brush Class by K. Nicole. I am K. Nicole. I am Kimberly Nicole. So it is named after me. However, it is a brush, makeup brush system, and it is a color-coded makeup brush system that makes learning makeup easier for makeup beginners. So that wow. is my number one product. So if I can't teach that, then I don't know what I'm doing in this world. <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't have a mic, but drops mic. <laughs> it's like, boom. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. I love it. It's like, you know your worth, you know your talent. And it's like, you know, I'm number one product. And this is part of me in the product. So I love that. I love that inspiration there. And um, as you mentioned earlier, you know, you face, you were the face of um, International Fashion House Prestige. And what I was going to say was, um, what advice would you give for, um, sort of uh, some models and um, becoming ambassadors because it's not a, it's not an easy jump is it really no um okay so let's just put this into perspective i am not the standard okay i am not a size eight uk i am not a size two us i am over 40 i am a bald black woman in the UAE, in the Middle East. I am so non-traditional that it is sickening. However, it's refreshing to a lot of other people. It is, yeah. And they finally, like I said, get to see someone who is not the standard. So my thing is, when I was trying to get out there, it was like, well, why can't I be my own standard? So now you actually, I start to see a lot of other women coming to me because not only am I, you know, the first uh, model to be showcased uh, as being bald, but I have a lot of other women referring other people to me who are going through hair loss, who are going through uh, wanting to shave their head and not as models, especially. They want to do it, but they don't know how they will be received. So you just have to understand your worth. You have to understand that you are not for everyone, but there is a tribe for you. There is an agency for you. There is a photographer, there is a designer, there is somebody for you. You just haven't found them yet. Wow. And when you do, you make sure you stay there. 
And you, you know still what? Sorry. I just, I'm, I'm just, in, so I'm just like, I feel like I need to write this down because I feel like as, you know, obviously we, you know, we, we're different and, um, you know, have had different journeys and backgrounds, but as a woman who has faced adversity as well, and I just find that it, it's so inspiring that you, you know, you're like, take me or leave me. I that there's the bar and I'm going to raise it higher and people are going to follow. And it's just so refreshing. I love your energy. I feel so inspired by the fact that you've just said, you know, here's a, here's the sort of boxes I should fit in as a model. And I'm just like, no, I'm, I'm here. And this is, this is me. And you're inspiring other people along the way. So I just think all testament to you. And I wish you every success. And I have no doubt with your energy that you will continue to, you know, you've got that drive. So, so thank you so much, Kimberly. And I forgot to mention another non-traditional about me is that I'm short. Wow. Yeah. And I teach runway. Exactly. That is so, impressive. And do you know what it's like? Charmaine, you can attest to that. Charmaine, you can attest. You've seen, you know. So it's almost like, um, so you can have somebody who's five foot nine, but for what? When you can have me and I can walk just as well. You know, it's, it, it, what, what would you prefer to have? You know, you, you can fit, like you were saying before. It, it's, it's an inspiration, but you still have to do it. You still have to go. You have to start. You have to get rejected. You have to find that area that works for, for you, that accepts you. So that's the only thing I can say. Well, thank you very much, Kimberly. And I'm, I'm really flattered to be hosting with people like this who have, you know, overcome obstacles to just, you know, the glass ceiling or whatever you call it, just smashed it and just inspired others along the way so thank you Kimberly um so um what what I'm going to go to is Charles um for the next uh, few questions hi Charles again hello <laughs> hi just checking to make sure that you guys can hear me still yeah yeah um well, wow I mean I'm sure by that speech you must be I mean just I don't know how you're going to top that. But I'm yeah, sure I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think, I think I'll just, you know, sort of uh, talk like that. So then gives me that confidence. No, no Kimberly, really, really, really great to hear from you, especially when you were talking about the lady from Spanx, because I was just watching a seminar by Tony Robbins yesterday uh, in which he was having an interview with, uh, I forget the girl's name, Sarah something or, well, anyway, uh, but about Spanx and how she started off as a saleswoman um, barely making a living to this multi-billion dollar company and she but she actually struggled and worked her way through but did ev everything that you know we can do as normal people but even more inspiring because she was a woman and she went against the grain and uh, I think her first sale was in Mar Neiman, Neiman Marcus something like that Okay, I'm not sure, yeah, but yeah. So, so that that was uh, that was really, really yeah. inspiring to hear that and to hear Kimberly talk about that again. And uh, Kimberly, kudos to you. Love the fact and love the gusto and the spirit and stuff yeah. that you have. Uh, yeah, exactly. So cool. All right, sorry. Okay, uh, cool. So <laughs> Charles, I've got I've got a few I've got an interesting question. You might not have had this before. So you've okay. got a fascinating background from nuclear physics to photography. Yeah. Now, what advice would you give to an academic? who wants to pursue photography, but it's not their main profession? Look, photography is something that anybody can do, okay? A lot of people will come and say, oh, you need to have the eye, you need to have the passion, you need to have this, you need to have that, you need to have good cameras. No, none of that is needed. All you need to do is be attentive and start focusing on this particular um, journey that you decide that you want to go on. Um, like I said earlier, uh, when I was speaking, I do have a course in which I talk about the philosophy of photography. What are the things that you need to sort of keep your eyes open for before you actually take that journey or decision to become a photographer? So um, what the thing that I would say is, anybody can become a photographer. And in fact, I can teach you to become a photographer in 30 days. You know, the, the basics, the understanding of it, just, just, it's, it's just um, a couple of things that you need. One is a decision or a determination that you want to become a photographer. And second is a little bit of um, time. That's it. And, okay. and that's the only things that you need to become a photographer. And it's really easy. And is, then after that is, of course, practice and, and, and getting assignments and stuff like that. 
Okay, thank you. That's inspiring. Um, what, what I was going to say, and this is a bit of a deep question. <laughs> so, okay. would you would you um, say that photography is a science or an art? Because you you do you do a bit of both, don't you? So, is it yeah. Good? Um, for me, when you're learning, it's a science, <laughs> and when you're executing after you've learned it, it becomes an art because like anything there is a sort of a learning curve that you need to you need to to go across but it's not very difficult and um, i mean i have taught children to to become photographers you know i mean obviously they don't, they're not going to be holding a big huge camera but you can do it with a phone and and with today's phones it's it's so beautiful and wonderful the the the, the, the technology that allows you to take all these photographs um, you can it's 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 um, it's very it's a very transparent border and the barrier obviously to entry has gone down earlier when you had to develop film and had 24 um, uh, pictures in a roll or a reel or even one shot in the old days when you used to cover your head and take one photograph you know those times yes you needed to it was a science because you had only one shot and you had to get it right today you click look at it see if it's okay change the settings and click again. So it's not that science part of it has been reduced, but understanding how a camera sees things is, um, is important so that you can then um, learn uh, how to take photographs and, and, and overcome the restrictions that the camera has because our eyes are far more powerful than the camera is today. Now tomorrow, Obviously, uh, the, the technology will get to where, you know, the, 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 the cameras will be better than our eyes. But for now, the, the, our eyes are far better. Um, yeah, sorry. Wow, thank you very much. That, yeah. That's really interesting. Um, thank you for that, Charles. Um, and I hope you keep up the, the, your passion. You're obviously very good at it as well. So yeah. um, don't worry about that assignment. We've forgotten about it. <laughs> just just we'll one thing. Yeah, just, just one thing I want to say. I'd like to get in touch with all the panelists over here somehow. I don't know how it'll be possible, but maybe Charmaine or the, the ladies uh, of All Nations uh, International can help out with this. I'd like to exchange information, meet people, and especially the ones who are in my local area, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Of course, Abu Dhabi is on lockdown. Once they open up, I'd love to, <laughs> love to <laughs> meet all of you. But uh, just, yeah, if we can just somehow get, get there. And if anybody needs to get in touch with me, I'd like to just share out my email and that um, I'll leave Charmaine to sort of do that, um, where they can get in touch with me, um, you know, for, for anything that I can help them with in terms of phot photography or um, other things. Sorry. Sorry no, absolutely. And I, I would encourage um, everyone after this um, to connect with all their um, links, websites and contact details and keep the support going um, for, you know, for, for the COVID-19 queries or and beyond. So to network, definitely. Um, so thanks very much, Charles, for that. Um, so could we go to Patricia, please? You just unmute. That'd be great. Thanks. Um, Can she just unmute? That'd be great. Oh yeah, hi. <laughs> Hello again. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, I've done a bit of research on you as well. So obviously you're um, an academic and a globe trotter, and you spoke earlier about, um, you know, we can travel with the mind when we, when we can't travel physically, and that's a really beautiful philosophy. Um, which country or countries um, has had the most impact on you creatively, and why? Depends on the season of my life. First of all, my first experience, I lived for a while in South America, in Central America, in Caribbean. It was a huge experience. Then was a decision for US, uh, Canada, North America. Then it was, okay, Europe was always a season because I'm Italian, it was network. Then I had an Asian season. And actually, I'm in the Middle East, but with the uh, NIs in Africa. So I think it's like a season of life. It's difficult what uh, is inspiring you the most. Uh, actually, Actually, Dubai is inspiring me a lot because it's like a teaching a big lesson. Is I to build something from zero, it's like from a piece of sand to have a vision and to create the future. 
And actually, I'm living in a, in a place that is totally the future. Before I was living in Rome, that is like totally the memory, our great past. So it's a kind of so totally different uh, experience. I think what inspires you is really to travel. And as I told you, you can travel with, uh, you know, physically, you can travel with your mind, you can travel through a book, you can travel through social networks, but like to be contaminated continuously from other experience, other people, other lives, what inspire you? Because you always get some um, feeling mm. and something new. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. And what would you say um, to any um, people who are just setting up a brand um, now and they can't travel? Are there any books you recommend um, or any blogs? Um, they are many, but I don't want to look what is going on uh, on web or social network. I'll try to read something from the past. Like, try to read The Adventure of Marco Polo, try to read the uh, books on some people that really create something mm. amazing. And those are try to be, like, different. If you go in Instagram and Facebook, you see a lot of amazing successful people, but it's their experience. Try to make your own experience. And maybe yeah, that's really good. Through, through yes, something that uh, surfing around, but really... For me, what is most inspiring as I started uh, before is like uh, the heroes from the past. For example, I think maybe it's very interesting to read the book uh, 1001 Night. We are here in the Middle East. Uh, and I remember I read this book, I was a young girl, and I really like you dream, you dream a lot. And then you had the chance to visit the place or to surf on the internet. And you mix uh, what is your feeling, what is your experience, what is like that. So for me, reading uh, was always my best way to be inspired. Oh, thank you very much for that, Patricia. I really appreciate that. Um, so if we could go to um, now, if we go back to Simran um, for the questions. Yes, Rita. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, so um, I'm sure you're also very inspired by um, everyone on the panel as well. Um, could you, I've just got, yeah, I've just got two um, ex uh, questions for you. So sure. um, you, do, you do a lot in um, film and fashion. So what is your advice for somebody who wants to combine the two? Fashion and what else you said? Film. So, so acting. Film? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Um, I think um, if you want to really, as a designer, if you want to work for film, uh, especially in my country for Bollywood, it's, it's definitely not easy, the entry, but you can definitely work as an assistant with someone and really help yourself out knowing, you know, uh, the charismas of how to really make the filmmaker happy, to make the director happy and to give them and to cater to all of them to the entire fraternity. The best thing for you would be to just join as an assistant designer, one of the known designers towards the group, and uh, I'll just be with them, gain expertise, and you will really work wonders. If you really think that you are very confident about yourself, you can also start with small films. You have small budget films, but a lot of times the small budget films could be also with some big names. So again, if you get a break there and if your designs are noticed, you could really walk the ladder pretty quick and pretty soon. So it just depends on your level of confidence. At the same time, if you can really go hand in hand with both, work as an assistant with someone, and at the same time, have your own designs, you know, mentally just prepare yourself so that the next film, once you're done with one film, the next film, you can really go ahead and uh, you know, approach the producers on your own and uh, approach the directors and uh, get your click done. So I think that would be really, really nice and the best way to really enter this world thank you for that that's 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 great and i've just got one more question for you um how important yeah. is um, the influence of fitness and yoga in your daily routine uh, i think it's of absolute utmost essence um simply because we not only think about the aesthetic appeal it's also about the mental well-being of the person uh, as we always say it's always the first appeal 
I'll be very honest with you. Everyone on this panel is so appealing that mm. um, you know I was busy dining at the same time because I had back-to-back -back shows for a couple of hours. But the fact is that I even forgot to blink my eyes taking a look at everyone. So definitely it's the aesthetic of meal, but that is just a minuscule part of what it does to your brain, to your mental well-being, holistic well-being, and spiritual well-being. So from that perspective, it really works wonders. Now, the most important thing is with our schedule, especially in the fashion industry, they are so haywire that you really can't stick to schedules. Uh, your time of sleep, travel, uh, everything really differs every single day. So it's difficult for us to really fall or, or probably give some time to you. So what I would recommend you is just have it uh, as a functional movement. So maybe, uh, you know, when, when you are sitting in your designer room, just sit in a nice posture. So for example, if I'm sitting here, I was just dining, but otherwise when I'm tired, I'll just sit in Padmasana. So this is a posture I will do while, you know, having a session here. So this is how you can really have this functional thing and the deep breathing on and off every few hours, reminding yourself to be mentally calm, which will really work wonders. And I think it will go a long way because then we don't specifically give time to someone or to any fitness level when uh, we are so busy in our schedules. So this is what I would recommend to everyone. It's very important, but a little bit, few minutes, five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening also could work wonders for us. Thank you very much for that. That's, that's really good practical advice as well um, in the morning. So um, thank, thank you. you for that, Suman, and I really appreciate thank that. Thank you. And um, could we go to um, Mauricio, please? Um, I'm sorry, Mauricio has, has to leave because he has another engagement. Okay. We'll pass Mauricio and we'll go to the next speaker. Okay, um, so if we go to Nihoka, please. Thank you. Um, so um, obviously, oh yeah, hi, yeah. thanks. Um, so could you, um, obviously you have a luxurious um, women's wear brand as well. Mm -hmm. um, could you, um, in three words, describe what you think luxury means? Luxury, if I had to describe luxury, mm. um, it doesn't have to be three words actually, it's quite a tough one. It's like a quiz show, isn't it? It's like turning into a quiz show here. But just what is, what is your sort of essential, how you describe um, a luxurious experience for women's wear? So, my, I'd say my word in describing luxurious is something because luxurious again does not mean expensive mm. do you see what i mean so um you can put on anything that makes you feel i, I can't describe it but it's about putting certain things together that makes you feel that that excellence within yourself because yeah. again anything can be luxurious and mean something totally different to somebody else do you see what um, I mean? So yeah. again, luxury, um, someone next to me can say they're wearing like something that costs like 5,000 pounds. And then I'm in something that costs 500 pounds. But I might look luxurious compared to that person wearing something expensive. So you can take lux luxury in whatever meaning it can be. But again, it comes in different forms. Being I, think, I think that's really a beautiful concept, especially when many people are facing maybe hardship in the COVID-19, that actually luxurious is more of a feeling and yeah, exactly. um, an essence rather yeah. than a, t a type of, um, you know, budget that somebody might be on. So, yes, thank you for that. And um, in, in the current climate, what advice would you give to women's wear designers um, to keep their client base? I just say like, again, it doesn't mean because of the situation that we're in, it doesn't mean that um, your business is over, like your, what, your, whatever you envisioned is over. Because as I said, I've kind of, I had fashion week to do in September and I'm like, it is what it is. We get up and we move on. We plan for the following month or the following year. So do not let this thing dishearten you, discourage you. We just get up and we just keep pushing on. 
wise words and um, so true for people in the industry who might be suffering or people who are not sure whether to get started. They might have become yeah. creative within the lockdown, but keep okay. going. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that, Nahoka. So now we're going to go to um, Priya. Hi, yeah. Priya. Hi again, Priya. Um, so what I wanted to talk to you about was um, obviously create creativity is um, is is in the essence of all that you do whether it's design or dance and what advice would you give to a fashion designer who wants to incorporate dance in their collection as a show or an event oh it's an excellent question and i always wish that on the ramp they should uh, have some kind of a dance posters or uh, some dance movements because uh, for me, dance is very feminine. And when you want to show femininity, uh, you can definitely use few posters. It can be anything like this. It can be opening uh, 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 your, no, your dress, uh, presenting it. So it will be very interesting. And uh, plus it will be unique uh, because uh, dance, uh, music, uh, and fashion go hand in hand. Because when I do my dance videos, I'm always, uh, very much clear on what I'm wearing, uh, how my dress will be, what my jewelry will be, and how my dress will be. So I always feel that there is a lot of connection with the fashion and the dance. Yeah. That, that's really, yeah, and, and obviously dance is fluid and feminine and it's it's a nice, it's a great way to express yourself in an art form. Um, so also I would say, um, what has been um, your main design inspiration as well in, in the day job that you do? Uh, design inspiration uh, would be more uh, modern and futuristic uh, because uh, what I believe is uh, whatever design or whatever trend, the trend uh, is there for few months, few years, and then it disappears. So there is always a transformation from what you see now and what is going to happen uh, in next five years or next 10 years. So I would like to go with the, you know, little bit futuristic, which, because it actually has to be with the, what is going to happen in the future. And uh, that's why I try to, you know, have the style which is contemporary, modern. Um, plus, uh, we can always blend with a traditional and the historical a uh, few elements and uh, there is always a possibility that we can blend mix and match and uh, do something unique something different uh, which i always try and uh, do it and uh, this is wha what i would like to achieve from that wow okay yeah that's that's in inspiring in some ways as well because you can also be influenced by the dance in your design because when you're dancing you probably feel um, that it comes to you naturally and you're in a good space and so the creative energy overlaps amongst different disciplines so yes thank you very much for that Priya and um, so I'd just like to say if there is any more questions um, if we go to the um, Q&A with the viewers if any if I see if there are any questions um, uh, I have a question for all the speakers do you think about pandemic, um, what do you think, what virtue stood best during this time for you? We have so many virtues in our life, but then what really stood best and what is that virtue who helped you overcome this COVID? We'll start with Kim. You would start with me, lady. Okay. Um. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. okay, so the virtue that has helped me to get through and overcome this COVID time, right? Okay, let me read one of them. Um, true success comes from subtraction and not addition. One thing that I was doing a lot of was thinking. And I was thinking more and more and more and doing too much. So much to the point that it almost confused me <laughs> and drove me crazy in this time of silence and solitude, okay? But someone uh, said, you know what? Why don't you focus on the true success of subtraction? 
that's where your success is going to come from. So that way you'll have the ability to actually focus. When you get the time to add those other things on, those things that you were working on before should be at least a little more solid. But at this time, maybe not, okay? <laughs> That's for me, okay? Um, another thing is uh, I have a whole wall and what I'm looking at is my wall of sayings. So that particular one has helped me since the beginning of this COVID time. Um, the other one was sit and be still and actually enjoy this time of silence because you will start to hear, you will start to see things that are necessary for your future. You didn't know you, you, you would be in this situation. So it's almost like you, you have to sit in it because you don't have a choice. But what you do while you're there is what makes the biggest difference. So sitting and being still has helped me to understand what my subtractions need to be in order for me to be successful once they open outside. <laughs> wow. In short. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That's very inspiring again. And just on a roll with the, the quotes and motivational speeches today, Kimberly, and um, they all resonate with, with some of us in some way or another, even if it's, you know, with a different background or story, I'm sure everybody can relate to what you've said. So thank you. Um, have we got any more questions on the chat or um, from anybody, any viewers? Well, uh, uh, all speakers can answer that question. We can uh, please oh, sorry, you yeah. yourself if you want to answer the question. What is the best virtue that stood up with you in this pandemic? Okay, I'm going to unmute myself and speak um, and following probably, you know, Kimberly as usual, just following around for the whole meeting. Um, yeah, no, there's been two things that, uh, that I feel, uh, I mean, uh, since you asked, one is um, there's no point on dwelling on negativity right now. Oh, my business is dying. Oh, um, how am I going to make money? Oh, what am I going to do? Uh, what is the, you know, like just the whole negativity side of things. If you start focusing on that, you are going to get yourself into a downward spiral and just go keep going down. And worrying is not going to change anything. So I say just turn, flip that around. And like we, when you'd asked um, <clears throat> originally about, you know, like how, what did you do? So for myself, I decided let's try and teach people, let's educate people, let's get them to learn. So turn some, a negative into a positive and just, you know, like keep a positive outlook and just keep moving forward. Things will change. And to, to, to take the, the words of Tony Robbins is um, that, you know, just keep moving forward, focus on your goal and you will eventually get to it. So, so that is, that is one thing. And the second thing is because in, in UAE, because of the lockdown and the, uh, that they, they didn't allow us to go out for, for, um, uh, outside to venture outside during this pandemic time, what happened was um, I used to go for a walk because I'm diabetic. Um, and I used to go for a walk every day, uh, 45 minutes, not, well, not every day, most of the time. But with this pandemic, they said, no, you can't go out and you, you have to stay at home. So what did I do? So I started exercising at home and trying to do, uh, you know, about a 50 minute workout where I break into a sweat, uh, do a little bit of, um, uh, some sort of exercises where my body would be activated and, and give me that, uh, that the burning of the calories, so to speak. So, you know, you can say, oh, no, I can't go out and I can't do my exercise. Or you can try and fix something in home. And I'm not saying, you know, I am the greatest or I can do that. But I'm just trying to say that create this positivity mindset if you can. And that will get you going and keeping you forward. It will not give you, get you stir crazy. Um, and, and just change posit uh, negativity into positivity. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Is anyone that wants to, you know, say something about um, the virtue that um, Shami just asked? Anyone wants to go next? 
So, yes. I'm sorry, uh, Bex just said uh, she has a problem with her phone. I think it's charging, so that's why I'm taking over, just in case you're like, yeah. what is this? <laughs> I'm the coordinator, so I'm recording and taking screenshots, so just so you all know. Okay. <laughs> I can speak. Uh, I have already unmuted myself. Okay. So, all, all right. So, one virtual word. I when the lockdown happened and when you, the gyms were closed, schools were closed, uh, offices were closed. Uh, so what what you do? You are at home and uh, you are not doing anything. So I have started the realizing that what talents I have and what talents I can uh, practice and make it uh, to the perfection. Uh, that's how I started my dance videos because before I was uh, thinking, no, I need that perfect dress, perfect choreography, that song, the light angle and you know what like in lockdown i just started my dance videos and if you can see on my instagram uh, uh, i just made so many videos like every day i used to do three or four videos 30 minutes of dance workout would burn so many calories it's a secret i will not share how many calories but you know i started doing that and it was a complete different world for me i was more energetic i was more productive i was more creative and uh, we have actually started online consultation uh, to different countries uh, during this lockdown so actually just one small talent of mine which i wanted to polish and make it to the perfection uh, it helped me a lot so like that, you know, people love music, people love painting, people love poetry, uh, writing. Uh, so they should utilize at least minimum 30 minutes or one hour a day or in a week. Um, just do that activity. And that actually keeps you motivated. Uh, you know, that, that will actually give you a lot of positive energy. And you will see a light. Uh, if your uh, current business is not working, if you are not employed anymore, you have a different talent or you have a different field to work for. So you will get the solutions and uh, it is quite easy. It worked for me and I'm sure it will work for uh, many of you as well. So that's uh, one virtue. And if you have a small kid at home, just try to see them, observe them. They are full of life. They are full of energy and they will be never tired they will be never sad so my kid my five-year-old actually gives me that inspiration and you know what if i fall down also it doesn't matter i'm a strong boy he always says that so that word actually you know motivates me it's like if he can say that even i can do the same thing if the if the things are not good so what i'm strong i will fight i will do it so that's that's about it i think you should have that attitude and mindset yeah wow thank wow you. thank you so much thank you um any other panelists that want to go we're waiting <laughs> may i can you hear me okay yeah, sure patricia go ahead okay. yes okay so uh, i think uh, like everybody uh, the key is to change. We are so used in our comfort zone, also if you have a crazy busy life, that when change things, uh, we are not ready for change. Mm -hmm. And uh, what uh, makes you to, to succeed is always be ready to change, be ready to understand the moment you are living and change what is your everyday routine in order to achieve something different, something better. For sure, I have to manage my clients in a different way. So I set up a different way to do it. And also, I did something that make me feel better. Like I adopt a dog. I start to take care of people that was in the house with me. I really changed my, you know, routine. And I was like doing a kind of countdown. Okay, let's see in two months where we are. So... Uh, what I want to achieve in two months, where I want to go, where, what I want to dress up, I need uh, to do this. So set up goals uh, and change your routine. That was the key for me. And I tell you the truth, I was totally busy also in the quarantine at home. So if you are ready to change and if you are trained to change and look uh, what's next, uh, I think that helps you really to, you know, to, to give a sense of what is going on and to face also the critical uh, situation.
that was uh, my experience and that me a lot. Wow. Thank you so much, Patricia. I know change is very difficult. And this quarantine time, I think, is a, is a great time for us to, you know, do a self-reflection and think about our life, and which a lot of people have been doing. They've been um, having that personal time to think about way forward instead of us living in the past, you know. So it's always, change is always a very difficult thing to um to do or something and like you said patricia sets a goal always sets to go in any anything you want to do in life thank you so much for that word thank you um any other any other word from the panelists can you hear me it's nayoka yeah Mayoka, yeah we can hear you loud and clear yeah see yeah. mine's a bit different because i've had a loss to the virus oh. um so it was hard because it was all over the TV because my uncle who passed away, he worked for the NHS, he was a nurse. So I couldn't escape it because it was all over the news. It was all over the radio. Um, I was in bed for about a few days and stuff. So it's about, okay, I can't just sit here because I've got a daughter as well who's 10. So I'm thinking, okay, um, I can't just sit here because what I was thinking is obviously because everybody's locked down, I can't be with my auntie. I can't be with no family member. We're not allowed to obviously be together. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, how I can help her and every, all the other family is why don't I organize a charity event for his memory, a tri tribute. So um, I sat there with my pen and paper and I started writing, like, I started researching venues, first of all. Um, the date I had in mind for it all. I contacted loads of venues who all got back to me, said they've heard that they've also seen the news about my uncle on the, the TV and stuff. So again, um, loads of people reached out to me. I contacted companies and how they can sponsor to put on this event for him. Um, so once I had everything in place, I contacted my auntie and his kids to say, well, this is what I would like to do for him and stuff so again i didn't sit there and let him die and defeat me do you see what i mean i wanted to do something in his purpose and do something to remember him by so i just got myself up and said to myself do you know what i'm going to do this tribute event for him and within that tribute well the event obviously was meant to be for november but but everything's still kind of in lockdown so they're not sure of how many number of people can be together but at least I know I went out of my way to try and organize something in his name. So again, it didn't, I didn't just sit down and kind of um, felt sorry for myself and just kind of hid away. I got up and said, you know what, I'm going to keep myself busy and I'm going to put on something for him. So that's my message in this. Wow, wow, quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> quite interesting. Um, Charmaine, are you still there? I think Simran wants to talk. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Sorry, I did, I did, I did raise my hand. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, you know, this is the time for all of us to know thyself, of course. But at the same time, we really need to take care of all the surroundings around us. Throughout our lives, we've always been wanting to work for our family and give the best to our family. So whether you are married or unmarried, we always want to make our families happy and spend time with them. Is the reason that why we always wanted to work hard so that we can go for an annual vacation. And now that we have the entire three months to ourselves, is the real time for all of us to be the best version of ourselves. So I've been in fact telling all of them that, uh, you know, how can we work on ourselves? You know, it's not that easy. It's very easy to say that, just sit and meditate when we don't have any income at home and sitting for three months without really earning anything. It's not an easy aspect to do that. So what I tell people is rather focus on, on keep on working because next two years, this year and the next year is all about creativity, innovation. So every single thing that you excel at, you can probably create your own niche and create, uh, you know, a look for yourself from a different perspective altogether. And the most important, when I say the better version of yourself is, let us all work towards anger and take anger out of our system. So does that really sound easy? Uh, not really, but we can always work at ourselves. So if we are at our home atmosphere, of course now we've started going out and we've started exploring things because 
lockdown is over at a lot of places. But why do we get angry if you're not at workplace, if you're not traveling or commuting? Why do we get angry even if we are in our own house? So we really need to work on ourselves or think about greed. Uh, we are living with absolute minimal stuff with us. We've not shopped for months together. We've not really got into, um, uh, you know, spas or salons to really work on ourselves. So basically, you know, our needs have become what is really most important right now for us. Uh, as far as eating, you know, we're not eating the lavish food that we used to eat. We, we just surviving everything which is simple because we have to do everything on our own. So can we remove anger out of our system? The answer is yes. So that will help us be more creative, more positive, and really have that calm and beautiful feeling. And then, as we always say, love is the essence of life. We need to really give love to everyone around us, to all our family members, because you don't know, we all are going through and sailing in the same boat across the world for, the, for a change. The entire world is sailing in the same boat. So it's very, very important for all of us to first love thyself by removing this out of our system. You write down on your planner when you get angry, how do you look in the mirror at first? What is, how is your heartbeat? It really pumps very fast. You look very sad, which you would never want to look and have that appealing face all the time. At the same time, you're spoiling the mood of all your loved ones around, you know? Is it really worth it? It's not. So um, if it's our mistake and if someone is angry, it's worth it. But if it's not our mistake and if someone is angry, then why should we get angry at all? I mean, just make yourself understand that it's okay, it's fine. It's someone else's perception. So I think these aspects could help you be the better version of yourself. So once things are normal, you will really be on the go and you will be on your toes with all that positive energy and the divine love within yourselves to go and explore and really win hearts. Wow, Simra, I, I'm really, really touched. You've done touch. You, you, the words that you use, they're so deep. Take anger out of ourselves. Wow, I really love that. And give, give love to yourself. Love yourself. You know, that is, those are very deep words. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, Bex, has, uh, Bex, she has to leave. And uh, I'm going to have some Shemaine to take over now. Is that okay with you, Shemaine? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. And we've been like two hours talking to each other. And it's been a very substantial, informative, and mind-blowing discussion with you. I would like to thank you for, again, for accepting this invitation. Thank you, Charles, Patricia, Kim, Priya, Nayoka, Simran, and Mar Marishu. And uh, I will be sending an email to all of you uh, with all the WhatsApp numbers, with your um, emails. So if you want to connect to each other, please do. I, I really organize this event to connect with people, to connect people to each other. And if you can help each other with your professions, we have a photographer here. Mm -hmm. Charles, once this lockdown will open, we are ready for the Global Women Empowerment Summit. <laughs> And uh, hopefully we can travel also to the Philippines. And Kim, I already sent you a message, so you better think about it. Priya and Simran, we have a plan. Patricia, we have so many things to do. <laughs> and Nayoka, hope to see you here in Dubai. We might as well go there in London, who, who knows. But, uh, our photographer here is very ready to travel there. <laughs> It is my pleasure and it is my honor to, to have you all ho here. My purpose is really to connect people so that we will be entwined and we will help each other survive and thrive in this world. And this is Charmaine, the managing partner and chief operations officer of Prodigy Bureau. In connection with, uh, on behalf of the Ladies of All Nation International, Dr. Ma Caroline Makaka, who is in behind the limelight. Can we host Hello to her. For you? Thank you. Hi. I was so inspired. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yes. So she's a very Inspiring. powerful uh, woman in the UK. So if you want to go to the UK, just contact her, and she will be very happy to accommodate you. Dr. Caroline, we will also be very happy to accommodate you here in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And again, oh, thank, thank you. you so much. You all stay safe. I will send the email so that we can contact each other, and we will continue to support each other. And again... Thank you so much and God bless us all.
Thank you. And you know what? I'm going to take a screenshot of everyone. So the ladies, if you need to find your face right now, just try and do that. So I, I need to take a quick screen screenshot, okay? All right. Okay. I see Kim already. <laughs> <laughs> the fashion nobra. <laughs> I, I just love her confidence, you see. She's just so bold and all. I got it. <laughs> thank you all so very much. <laughs> and uh, we, I need to, I need to say thank you so much to Beck. She has to leave. So thank you, Beck. Thank you so much for, for, uh, for hosting. Thank you. You did a great thank job. Thank you, Beck. Thank you so much. And you all have a time. wonderful day. Bookie, thank you so much, Bookie. No problem. Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. Like us in Instagram, Prodigy Bureau and Luani Global. And uh, let's, support each other's social media pages so that we can promote each other. <laughs> if you need my help, just message me. You have my WhatsApp number. You have my email. Just let me know. I'm here always to support and assist you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.